the Irish guy and I'm Imagine having the ego of Dean Henderson. I mean, Christ, well, this guy probably walks into Marks and Spencer's and demands that everyone kneels down and kisses his feet. I mean, tell him to wait in a queue with a bag full of vegetables and he'd probably spit in your eye. I mean, this is a man who probably spends every weekend knocking back champagne in five star nightclubs and just to be an arrogant nuisance would probably be also found peeing in the sink. You just know this guy won't agree to talk to you unless you've got a blue tick on Twitter. I mean, if children knock on his door at Halloween, yeah, they'll probably get the butler to stab them in the nose with a fork. Now, obviously, this is all pure guesswork from me. Maybe he's a nice guy, but uh, right now, come on Dean, who do you think you are? Right now, he's walking around with the swagger of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I mean, he's just launched into a bitter interview about Man United. And honestly, this is like the ending of The Departed, because it looks like he's just exposed himself as the rat. I mean, last season, there were all sorts of reports about toxic dressing room leaks coming out of Old Trafford. People just unhealthily leaking information to the press. Obviously, footballers with the professionalism of burnt black and white pudding. I mean, within two weeks of poor old Ralph Rannick taking the job, I mean, here was a story in January. Dean Anderson stormed out of Man United training after Ralph Rannick broke promise. Yeah. Because he wasn't allowed to play against Aston Villa, apparently he thinks it's acceptable to leave the training ground. I mean, apparently, this guy's been whining about broken promises for a solid nine months. I bet like how my dad whined about my mother's pregnancy and kept asking her why didn't she take the pill. Well, Manchester United have this summer just purged themselves of Paul Pogba, Jesse Lingard, Edison Cavani and Dean Henderson. I mean, to be fair, they've also let Juan Mata leave. But I mean, considering he's football's Mr. Nice Guy, someone who probably helps old ladies across the road, I think lumping him in there with the Brat Pack is a bit unfair. But honestly, Pogba, Lingard and Hendo just stink of that elitist high school clique. You know, football's answer to 90210 or those rich surfer kids at home and away, the type who sneer down their nose at everyone else and who purposefully throw their lunch at the janitor's car. I mean, that poor guy, every afternoon at four, being forced to wipe Greek yogurt and melted Toblerones off his bonnet. But poor old Matta, oh, you just know, he was one of the quiet ones sitting in the corner of the canteen, no doubt reading a book. I mean, there's a guy who wanted to be a journalist. But speaking of which, why does he not have a transfer yet? I mean, come on, Juan, just get creative with it. I mean, even Seth Fabregas is joining Como in Serie B, weirdly being signed by Dennis Wise. You know, the guy who used to scout footballers off YouTube in 2008, back when every video was clearly just shot on a tin of baked beans. A YouTube era pre-KSI. But, but Fabregas are now playing in a team with Ireland under 21 winger Liam Kerrigan, who joined them from Sligo Rovers. Playing in the same team as a world champion like Fabregas. Oh, that was a dear diary moment, right? Something to stick on TikTok. I mean, this is a fellow who could so easily just be putting pints in the pub in Galway whilst tucking into a sports science degree and spending every Friday night eating pizza in the nude. So playing with Sesk. Fair play. But Dean Henderson, who does he think he is? This is a man still employed by Manchester United and has come out and called his treatment of the club criminal. Henderson has said that coming off the back of your 2020, he'd been told that he was Manchester United number one and uh, that he got sick, was unavailable for the start of the season and never got his place back. I had turned so many good loans down last summer for that reason and they wouldn't let me go. Waste 12 months was criminal already at my age. I was fuming. It was so frustrating. Am I the only one who thinks that when a 25 year old goalie from Carlisle, someone who is fourth choice England goalkeeper, when he comes out and says that he is fuming because somebody deemed him to be a worse footballer than David De Gea? Ah, uh, is this a joke? Sorry, Dean, you're a former Grimsby and Stockport number one. I mean, when Marcus Rashford scored his debut goal for the club, you were just a fan in a hoodie in the crowd. The entitled attitude to just assume that you're better than De Gea. I mean, this is David De Gea. You should be privileged to even be able to sit beside him at lunch. Oh, by the way, lads, if you're new here, then I'm trying to get to 150K. Just 9,000 left, okay? It would be amazing to hit that number, okay? If you're new here, then just subscribe. Absolute legends. Anyway, back into the video. When you look at the current Man United roster, this man is the closest thing to Mr. Manchester United. Apart from Cristiano Ronaldo, he's the only man in this entire squad who knows what it's like to win a Premier League title for the club. Again, other than Ronaldo, the only player to be signed by Sir Alex Ferguson. I mean, this man is a window into the past. I mean, Dean, don't you act like you didn't spend your teenage years drooling over this man. I uh, now you're acting like it's a personal insult that you're being told to play second fiddle to him. Even the sole fact that this man was able to command a contract worth £110,000 a week signed in 2020, the fact he was able to shake Manchester United down for that much money would prove that his agent was probably threatening to leave for Chelsea. I mean, considering he's a Manchester United number two, he should be on nothing more than a 60 5,000 pounds a week. You know, Brendan Williams sort of money. I mean, go back a year ago and Manchester 
Manchester United were paying nearly half a million pounds a week to two goalies just because the indecisive of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer still didn't know which one he liked the best. I mean, Henderson seems to enjoy rewriting history. I mean, by the sounds of it, you think that this guy had been Man United number one for the entire of the 2021 season, right? And so was inexplicably binned for the next campaign. No. Can I remind everyone that in Ollie's final full season in charge, you know, apparently Henderson's breakout season, um, he was still stuck on the bench for 35 games. I mean, if you want to include England matches too, then he was bench warming for 47 games in 2021. Uh, not really much of a breakout year, that. I'm sorry, Dean. Yes, he went on a little run of games in the spring, but really playing eight Premier League matches in a row and he suddenly assumes he's the club's number one? No, it's like going on two awkward Tinder dates with a girl and then going home and changing your relationship status on Facebook. Ah, uh, what are you doing? In Henderson's head, he made it. He was now Man United's goalie. No! Is he forgetting that his final Old Trafford outing of the season, he was picking the ball out of his own net four times against Liverpool. I mean, if that is the club's last memory of you before the summer break, it's going to leave a pretty sick taste of cat vomit in their mouth. He said that wasting 12 months is criminal. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you going to do with those 12 months? What? Be part of the worst Manchester United team in Premier League history? I'm sorry. Look at David De Gea's season. Do you think picking four goals out of your net against Leicester, Watford, Man City, Brighton and Liverpool twice looked fun? Honestly, skipping that season almost did your stock a favour because honestly, if a newbie rookie goalie like him had been in goal for that, people would be thinking you're the next Roy Carroll. Listen, I know the previous season, this man had a bit of buzz about him when I'm known as Sheffield United, but I'm sorry Dean, do you not know how quickly all that wears off? I mean, grinds up the same season, Aaron Ramsden being relegated with Bournemouth. I mean, most people looked at him as if he got wrists made of cheese. I mean, Chelsea needed a goalkeeper in the summer of 2020, and let's be honest, Ramsdale would have been perfect for them, but his stock had just been wiped all over a sticky toilet seat. I mean, if you'd asked people in the street during the summer of 2020 whether they'd like Henderson or Ramsdale in Nets, it would be like asking them whether they'd be like to give it a pristine chocolate birthday cake or a bag of their own Nance poo. But now look at the turnaround. It's generally accepted that the wacky class clown Ramsdale is levels above this dull love island wannabe. Honestly, the buzz about English goalkeepers, it goes away quickly. I mean, look at Jack Butland or even Sam Johnstone. Two years ago, when he was in the Premier League with West Brom, there were some Man United fans who wanted him back at the club. But now, he's probably just going to be Crystal Palace number two. Dean Anderson reveals he refused to meet new Man United boss Eric Ten Hag over fears to be persuaded into staying. I didn't really want the manager to see me in training because I knew he'd probably want to keep me. Does he not hear himself speak? He couldn't sound any more like Katie Price if he tried. There's a man who purposely refused to train for Ten Hag because, oh, clearly he's such an irresistible goalkeeper. There's no possible way the new boss would let him leave, right? I mean, apparently he'd sooner let his wife walk out on him than Henderson, right? Oh, once he sees you acrobatically saving top in shots, sprawling about like Peter Schmeichel, he'd probably handcuff you to the corner flag, right? No, this is lunacy. Imagine. Imagine if Joe Hart had said that when Pep Guardiola walked through the door. And that once he sees him in training, there's no earthly way Pep would let him leave, right? Dean, you are 25 years old and the current number one for a team who this time last year were bottom of the championship. I don't get it. How? How could your ego be this big off the back of two seasons for Sheffield United? I mean, in a Manchester United shirt, he has kept four Premier League clean sheets. Four. And he's acting like he's the English Buffon. Does a man cry because he turned down amazing loan offers last summer? Um, so what? Uh, he said no to Wolves. I mean, sure, yeah, I mean, decent regular game time in the Premier League. Getting the chance to replace Rui Patricio, I suppose. But the way this guy was speaking, you'd swear he just said no to Juventus from Milan. Yes, two years ago, this guy at Chelsea sniffing around his armpits like a gang of hungry London pigs. Although the reports say they put in a 50 million pound bid. Surely, surely there's no truth in that. Surely whoever put that story out there isn't actually a journalist, but instead just some bored farmer in Sligo who's taking a break from milking cows into a bucket just to spread some footy lies on the internet. No way would Chelsea bid that much for Man United's leftovers. I, just for a guy wallowing in the Old Trafford bench? No, you need to understand that these proud massive football clubs wouldn't dare ruin their image by overpaying for their rivals unwanted rubbish. Honestly, for the same reason, you wouldn't see Tottenham next summer replacing an elderly Hugo Lloris 
with a 40 million pound move for Kepa. But these reports have clearly scrambled Henderson's brain and grasp on reality and just given him the ego of Beyonce. No, sorry Dean, you might look like the modern day Joe Hart. You might be screaming out for a shampoo brand deal, but I think even those comparisons are an insult to Joe Hart. Sure, you've had a similar path. Hart came through at Shrewsbury Town, you came through at Carlisle. You both played cricket as children, both moved to Manchester, and then were immediately loaned to the lower leagues. Yeah, but I'm sorry, Dean, at 25 years of age, Hart was winning the Premier League title as Man City number one. I mean, he was playing against Real Madrid in the Champions League, and it was undisputed England number one with nearly 30 caps. Henderson has been capped by England what? I mean, reality check Dean. If you want to look at a closer career path, then uh, maybe, maybe you should start accepting that you're the modern day Tom Heaton. A guy who spent eight years in the books of Man United, but his biggest legacy is just having been the Burnley number one. I mean, can you imagine if Ben Foster had acted this way when he was 25? Because let's not forget, between 2008 and 2010, he played 22 times for Man United, including in the Champions League and the Manchester Derby. And oh yeah, he kept seven clean sheets. Three more than Dean. And can you imagine if then, when he was so the Birmingham. Can you imagine if he'd come out and blasted the club for not choosing him instead of Edward van der Sar? Can you imagine what an arrogant plum he'd have looked like? I uh, just someone with the brains of mashed banana. I think Sir Alex Ferguson would have probably punched him in the face. The thing is, I bet if you offered Henderson the chance to have a career on par with Heaton or Foster, he'd look at you as if you'd offered him the once in a lifetime opportunity to scrub pooey bums down the local nursing home. But honestly, Henderson, look where you are. You're playing for a newly promoted club. What makes you so special? You are on course to have a Ben Foster career. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'll uh, maybe try and spend the next 10 years trying to drop the entitled prima donna attitude. Because honestly, try and go on YouTube with a Kardashian persona and you'll soon have the viewers getting sick on the screen. But yeah, Henderson, stop complaining. Anyway, that's what do you think. Let me know in the comments like below what do you think about Dean Henderson's comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe as always. I'll talk to you in a while.